Hi everyone, welcome back into another video. Pretty self-explanatory this one, you've seen it in the title, let's just get straight into it. So with my job running my simulator and people coming in all the time, car fans and massive F1 fans really, and we've been on the Isle of Man, it's always to talk about the TT versus F1, and this constant question comes up all the time, how quick could an F1 car do a lap of the TT course? actually trying to make that happen to get an F1 car to do a lap of the TT course obviously it's never going to happen but even to just try and make an estimate of how that would go it's quite difficult especially because if they were to do it they'd want to do it with the most urgency and the fastest time they possibly could and uh, so to make a prediction on that's really really difficult so this is just for fun obviously it's just quite an interesting topic and it's always an interesting one to talk to people about to see what they think because uh, when you look at the numbers and you break it down the lap time that they should do is really quite interesting uh, let's have a quick look at it so all we can really do is take a look at the current f1 circuits that are on the f1 calendar and the ones that are on the motor gp calendar and obviously comparing motor gp and f1 on a short circuit is completely different to comparing tt on the roads and f1 but again just for a bit of fun let's have a little look so red bull ring lap record in f1 car is somewhere around a minute and five seconds and the motor gp lap record is somewhere around one minute 30. And so all we're really doing is looking at the difference between them. Percentage-wise, well, we're looking at about 27, 28% difference in the time. And then you look at Silverstone. So Silverstone, completely different to the Red Bull ring. Red Bull ring's very, very fast, very, very hard break into a stop to a really slow corner. And then the same again, a bit of a faster section at the end. But Silverstone, different. Looking at lap records around Silverstone, you're looking at a 157 for MotoGP and a 124 for F1. So again, it's a bigger time difference, but it's a longer lap. Percentage-wise, pretty much the same, 27, 28%. Then moving to Cota, Circuit of the Americas out in Texas, and you're looking at MotoGP around two minutes, Formula One, one minute 32. Again, similar kind of difference in terms of time for Silverstone because it's a similar kind of lap length, but a little bit tighter here on percentages, down to sort of 22, 23% difference between the times. And the reason why for that, the makeup of the circuit, obviously, is, is what causes it. If you think Formula 1 cars get their biggest difference over a motorbike through high-speed corners where they can use the downforce of the, of the car to, to generate the speed. If you're talking about acceleration off a really slow corner, the difference between them isn't huge. I mean, whatever you're talking about, the F1 car is better. It accelerates better, it brakes better, it turns better. It's better, it's got four wheels, that's, that's not what we're debating. But when you're trying to get off a slow corner and you're just going fast and your limit is just basically grip, there's not much between them. And again, heavy braking, obviously an F1 car is going to stop better. But once you get down to a speed below like 70, 80 miles an hour where the aero effect on the car is basically zero, you're just talking about mechanical grip, the difference between them isn't huge. If you're talking about corners at 130, 140 in an F1 car, it might be 100 miles an hour on a bike because you don't have the aero. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked a little bit. The difference between those two, obviously down a little bit, 22, 23%. And the last one we'll look at, I think we've seen enough now, is Catalonia, Barcelona, 138 for the bike, 115 for the car. So again, looking at 22, 23%. So once we take the four tracks into consideration, you're looking at 27, 28% on some, 22, 23 on the others. Let's just average it out and say 25%. Let's say that on average, a Formula One car is 25% quicker on a lap than a Merge GP bike. And obviously you can see where this is going. We're gonna move on to the TT lap record. So obviously when it comes to the TT, uh, it's completely different. And I don't want everyone to start like having a go at me in the comments about you know why I've got all this all wrong. It's just for a bit of fun. We're generalizing a lot to do with it. And there's a lot of assumptions made here. I'm just really talking about, in theory, how fast could it, could it, could it do the lap? So if we're looking at 16.36 for Hickey's lap record and we talk about TT speeds more as a mile an hour rather than a time. So let's just say 136 miles an hour. And it's not going to take a genius now to say 136 plus 25% is going to get you somewhere around 170 miles an hour. And obviously, as soon as you utter those numbers, it just sounds absolutely ridiculous. 170 miles an hour average lap speed is ridiculous. And to be honest, it probably is a little bit. And there's one main reason why. When you're talking about the top speed of MotoGP and F1, MotoGP is actually quicker. And with the TT being such a high speed course, 
the Formula One car is not going to be 25% faster than the top speed of a TT bike. Let's just say TT bike can do 200 miles an hour down the straight, obviously pretty simple, plus 25%, 50, 250 miles an hour. Formula One cars aren't doing 250 miles an hour. Now they could if you took all the wing off, but then they would be no good in the corners. The cars aren't gonna be doing 250 miles an hour on Cronkavody Street and down Solby Street. They're just not gonna be. I still think it's gonna be higher than a lot of people think. I still think people say maybe 160, which again, it's just the numbers. They just sound ridiculous to say you can average 160 because there are some really tight corners. You know, they're not gonna be going round Ramsey Hairpin at 80 miles an hour because you just can't do it. Mechanically, you can't do it. So you're not gaining any time there. But there's so many fast corners at TT where you go back one or back two and throw it in and the, the F1 car would be flat out. In theory, obviously with the bumps and the track surface and things, they wouldn't be. But in theory, again, yeah, it could do. So I think somewhere around 165 to 170, I think that could be the average speed of an F1 car around here, in theory, of course. Um, but we can test it in theory, can't we? So let's get out of here. Let's get down there and let's go and see how fast we can do it. Let's go. So here we are in the simulator about to attempt our TT lap around the TT course. As you can see, lovely sunny day on the Isle of Man. Obviously it wasn't TT this year, but let's get out there. Let's have a go and let's see what kind of speed we can do. Off we go, just throwing gears at the car. <laughs> Can't throw them out fast enough. And already you can see and feel the bumps heading down the hill. So fast. How late can we break for Court Bridge? Well, definitely later than that. The braking performance is unbelievable. And how quickly it jumps off the corner. Just trying to gauge how fast we can actually carry speed to these corners. Like, look how fast the stuff's coming at you. Okay, you can't even imagine that in real life, can you? You'll notice when I shift from seventh up to eighth, it goes to N. This is an F2 wheel. Uh, F2 cars don't have eight gears, and they didn't but definitely back then when this was built. Fast through there. Obviously, you can already see the difference in corner speed is just massive. Balagheri's going to be easy flat in this. Not even a thought about it. Obviously in real life, it'll take a little bit more doing, hanging onto it through there. And then approaching Greeba Castle, it's going to take a little bit more negotiating than the last couple of miles. I think back one for the start. Oh, there's still so much grip. There's so much traction left in the car. Interesting how it goes light over the crest like like the bike does. Apple Dean's not even a question really. I can feel how much grip it's got now, it's a lot. Back. You could have gone through there quicker, but just trying to find out how fast you can actually go without sticking it in the wall. Gorse Lee is gonna be easy flat. How late can we break for Balacrine? about that late. So late. <laughs> and just throwing gears at it on the exit. Oh, I'd almost got away there. Definitely gets loose over the bumps, which obviously is one of the arguments for this. Could the car cope with the bumps? This whole section's so full on, you just don't get a break. It's bad enough on the bike, but in the car, the stuff's coming at you so fast. And we talk to newcomers about when you come to the Isle of Man for the first time, how it takes a while for your brain to get up to speed, to be able to absorb information that comes at you this quickly. I can't even imagine what it'd be like in a Formula One car. Not had a chance to look at the clock yet. Three and a half minutes, roughly, to Glen Helen. I don't know what that average is out at, but I think it's pretty quick. Just thinking now about how much grip I've got, I know the 11th is going to be flat without any lift. I 
and Hanley's is going to be really quick. Not flat though. When I think about how quickly you get through Hanley's, I'm thinking about that swimming pool section at Monte Carlo where the car just darts from one side to the other. Top of Bagaro is going to be easy flat over the top and uh, he'd never attempt it but the bottom's going to be easy flat too. Real life I think that might cause a bit of damage. And that's the whole argument for this isn't it? I could have gone quicker through the 13th but You see how much of this so far is just really, really fast. And that's where the F1 car is so quick. Look how fast to be able to go through Douglas Road Corner. That is incredible. Because it's where the Formula 1 car shines. High speed corners, the downforce you get from the car just means it's so much quicker than a motorbike. I'm going to have a lot left here. And back on the power side, it's so quick. You know, in theory, you could just go so much of this would be so close to top speed in an F1 car. It's scary, really. But yeah, the main thing that stands out is just how much cornering grip it's got through the fast corners and how late you can break. Brakes is just amazing. Let's see. Let's see how light we left it there. Over Balaf Bridge. <laughs> that would be the argument for people. You can never get an F1 car over a Balaf Bridge. But if you've ever seen an F1 car go over a big sausage curb at Spa and take off, you'll know I think that'll be okay. Balacry might be a different story though. Quarry Benz, this is a prime example of high speed corners where the car uses all its aero grip as I nearly lost it on the second one. See, you think of a motorbike approaching Quarry Benz, it might be doing nearly 200 miles an hour and it really has to slow down for the Benz, whereas the F1 car barely even lift for it. In theory, the bumps on the road uh, surface might tell a different story in real life. Again, we're able to break really late for Sylvie Bridge. Just careful on the exit. And that's Sylvie in seven minutes. <laughs> and immediately you see how bumpy it gets now through this section. It's almost, you can't see properly. And it's a little bit like that on the bike, to be fair, where it's so bumpy, your vision becomes a little bit blurred and you're getting the same effect sat here in, in this. Oh, through the KG, nearly <laughs> lost it there again. It's so bumpy. I can feel it so much through the wheel. Just realizing how much grip we've got and driving the car to it. And on the brakes heavy for Parliament Square. And it actually calms down for a little bit. So fast. It's incredibly quick. May Hill. And then White Gates. Such a difficult little section. And can we get it around the hairpin? Oop. Just. <laughs> what works? Tricky on F1 car as it is on the bike. Fast through tower bends. I look through here. Just using the aero grip of the car again. So quick. Oh, little lock up on the way in. As soon as the speed falls off to a point where you lose your aero grip, the car becomes really cumbersome. Obviously around the TT course, that isn't very often because it's so fast, but any of those really heavy braking spots where you're getting down to below 60 miles an hour, the car is really quite awkward at those speeds. Oh, it's <laughs> and onto the mountain mile in around 10 minutes-ish. It's going to be somewhere between 13 and 14 minutes, I think, which ties in pretty well with what, what we were predicting. The car's got a lot of grip at high speed. It's just when you're lifting off and you lose a little bit of weight transfer, the rear does become loose, as you'd expect. No question of any of this section's flat out or not. 
You see how much more stable the car is up on the mountain? Now we're away from all those bumps on the lower section. This is where the car's really going to shine on these fast, swooping, smooth corners. That is so quick through there. Uh, places like that where you can definitely go faster, but we're not here to try and do the ultimate ever lap. Just see how quickly it's <laughs> lazy there. Roughly, we can get a lap out of an F1 car. Lucy there, heading into heading into Keppel. Lovely little section of track. Down to Kate. It's going to be easy flat through Kate. And how late can we leave the braking for the Craig? I'm going to say about there. Not too bad. Just look how quick you have to throw the gears at it going downhill. Now, speed-wise, we're doing like 320 k's, so yeah, it's, it's roughly somewhere where we should be. Old Brandish. Whew. <laughs> Nearly lost it in the bottom there. Now, breaking for the corner, you can't see into signpost, trying to lock it up. Tidy enough. Bedstead to tighten than you think. Into the nook, and can we get it round the dip? A little bit of contact. I think we'll get away with that. <laughs> On to Glen Crutchy Road. Heading to the line in 13 minutes and 30 seconds. So there you have it. There's my, uh, there's my lap of the TT course in a Formula One car. Theoretical, of course. 13 minutes, 31 seconds. Uh, and the average speed of this, as I'll put it in. There you have it. In theory, that's how quick you can get an F1 car around the TT course. Just for a bit of fun. Bit of a different one this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.